It was talk oh, it was Yanko, sorry, in the opening features talking about how mysterious monkeys they don't really play for anything. And sure, in terms of standings, they don't play for anything, but in a week from now, they're playing promotion tournament. They're playing for a lot. They need to use this as great stage practice against a good team in Europe. Come in as prepared as possible, as we just saw NIP do, you know, yesterday. You want to win here as monkeys. It gives you confidence. It kind of confirms that some of the things you're working on are actually working for you. And it might set them up for success in the promotion tournament. You don't want to get 2-0 spanked completely by H2K. Especially considering they're facing up against NIP, who won yesterday against Fnatic, Giants, who are looking very good, and Chalka, who are looking very good in the Challenger mm -hmm. series as well. We do have a few bands coming out here, Mark. Uh, DeFisher, almost called you Martin. That's Everton. fine. Too personal already. Maokai, Jarvan, the Zac, and the Caitlyn being taken away. All right, so Jarvan ban. Uh, H2K very clearly looked up Kikis and he saw a queue. Uh, the last 30 games, I believe I saw like 27 Javan games and three something like NAR or something else. Like, literally just spamming that champion at the moment. So taking it away obviously is also a flex pick. So far, no big surprises. Kate Zack coming on one side, yada, yada, yada. Maokai in the other one. Just Blue side right now is his preference. I'm like, what do we not want to play against? You know, Maokai, easy to use, good for a bottom tier team. LeBlanc can snowball out of control. Uh, they do take it away. And the Callista Band is the final one for the Mysterious Monkeys. A key AD carry in the current patch, 715, of course, the patch that we are on. H2K have first pick preference here. What do you think they're going to go towards? Well, do they want the lease for Yankos and focus on the early game? Do they want a scaling jungler for him and just pick something completely different as the first pick? Because Gragas is available as well as a flex choice. When our Elise is open, most teams will take her. Uh, same for H2K and Yankos. And Mysterious Monkeys probably expected this one. So what is the answer? Tristana would be my... A go-to choice, Gragas can then tag along, and then you have a good first rotation. Gragas and Tristana would be a very strong combination for the Mysterious Monkeys. They may look up towards a tank in the top lane instead, though. Ooh. Or even the Orianna early okay. on for Koscu. Orianna coming in so early, like, she actually has a very impressive win rate. Uh, for a champion that's got picked so much in the EULCS, it's over 70% right now. Uh, a lot of mid laners are like, yeah, you know what, there's no real counter picks, we can just pick her whenever we want. I think Lucian is one of the answers that we've seen quite a few times that I always find interesting. Uh, just trying to win lane against her and see if you can snowball uh, Febben. He can definitely play Lucian if he wants to, but Syndra is also available, so is Talia. Those are the more standard picks. Here's the Tristana that I would have loved to see Mysterious Monkeys grab. And we do see the hover. Now, Azir can be picked against Oriana. We saw it yesterday. It did not work out too well for Caps at all. It didn't. I still believe in Azir. Febiven uh, does not want to pick it for now. We'll have to wait and see what he is going to pick here. Expect it to be a mid laner, though, because otherwise it's going to get taken away in that second phase of bans. A lot of different options for him. Could even go for the Thresh. We haven't Thresh mid lane him yeah. yet. Yeah, thresh mid lane is incredibly <laughs> good to fish here. All right, we get to chase Thresh. Definitely been one of his best champions this split uh, for one of the best supports as well. Uh, it's your case. Che down the bottom lane, always looking fantastic. But I think the monkeys are not too concerned uh, with H2K putting so much focus on the early game just yet. They do have quite a strong laning phase on their hand with Oriana and of course Zyra Rakan. A lot of playmaking, which I think is important. Like you need safe and easy engage to use. If you're not relying on fancy macro, Sometimes you just gotta be able to click one button and start a fight. You can do that with Rakan. And giving Yuki a champion he's relatively comfortable on when he has been a key member of Mysterious Monkeys in these late game team fights. I'm really interested to see how effective they are in that bottom lane. It is a Lucian ban, so Mysterious Monkeys read your mind, and now H2K will look to their first ban of the second phase. Yeah, the only problem for the monkeys is they can't really ban out February because Syndra or Talia will be left open for sure. A book will be very strong picks in the current meta. I'm meaning that I'm sure Febrian will be okay. And maybe he still wants to play the Azir. We could see it. I really want to see it again. Uh, I definitely think I it really can work. don't. <laughs> yeah, come on. It yesterday. All right, all right. But what HK is uh, showing us so far is just like insane setup for Yankos to succeed. Like Thresh in the bottom lane to help Elise set up gangs. We haven't even seen the top lane pick yet. Things like Renekton would be available. Rumble. If you want to, after a few levels, start pushing kickers on the tower and then tower dive with Elise. Like, this to me smells like the game where Yankos, in true Yankos fashion, can just go completely off early on and just gank everything in the early game and get a massive advantage for H2K. And Yankos' early game hasn't really been his key component this split. He's been much more about playing tanks, getting later onto the game, a bit more reliable in that sense. Has actually lost the first Blood King 
title. For now. For, for now, to Broxo, who has three more first bloods than him across the course of the split. Jace was banned, as was Shen by H2K, and it's a Gragas lock for the Mysterious Monkeys. All right, so far, still a flex choice. A Jarvan, of course, was banned earlier, so that is not available for Kickers. Top lane, though, you can de definitely still go Rumble here if you want for H2K, but you might then actually want to look for a physical damage mid laner. Uh, and with the Lucian ban and Jace ban, that seems to be why they do not want to go for any AP tops. And just take the Renekton for even more setup for the good old Yankers. Yeah, they are just listening to you, Deficio. Both these teams reading your mind, and it will be such a strong top jungle duo. Tower diving early on is something we tend to see out of the Renekton and the Elise combo. H2K now looking towards that mid lane for Biv and Comfortable yeah. with so many different champions. Syndra's definitely in his wheelhouse. So we got CC from the Thresh in the bottom lane, some CC in the top lane from the Renekton. What about a little bit of CC setup in the mid lane from Syndra, pair there with their Elise, and you have a draft that is focused around getting ahead in the early game from H2K. A lot of scaling on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. Gotta be careful, it's not too much scaling as well, because then you don't even get to the late game in the first place. And that's actually why I think Rek'Sai makes a lot of sense. A little bit more early pressure for Rek'Sai compared to, let's say, a Krager's jungle, right? You can actually have quite a lot of successful ganks on this Rek side. Your scaling is not as great, but right now, Mysterious Monkeys, they're concerned. Can they even get to the late game? That is the worry, and especially when you're putting a lot of your impetus in the early game on someone like Amazing, who's actually fallen off in the last yeah. couple of weeks. He really needs to step up to fight off against someone who's so strong in the early, like Yankos. Both these teams now are locked in. We've talked about the early game setup for HTK and the ability for Yankos to gank, but how do they actually win the game after getting ahead? I mean, oftentimes, if you have a comp like the, the one HK is showing us with like Renekton and Syndra, these champions, once they get even slightly ahead in the game, like a half item, maybe a full completed item, like you can just keep forcing plays. You can always push in lanes because you're just stronger in the mid game, and you can use that to literally take over the entire map. Like, pick one side first, cover that, use it to play around that side. Once you get the advantage, swap sides. You don't care. You have a winning top laner, you have a strong mid laner, you have a fantastic bot lane setup with Thresh to pair up with the Elise. Like, HK should be able to put pressure on multiple lanes at the same time, and playing against that is often close to impossible. Especially considering how clean H2K have been over the last few weeks. Probably one of the teams that are the best coordinated out of any of our top four. Yesterday we saw Giants fall as Fnatic and G2 lost to the bottom teams in their group today. H2K and the Unicorns of Love tried to prove that the top teams in the EU still belong at the top. It was such a weird day yesterday. Watching from home, just being like, yeah, you know, this is gonna be 2-0, 2-0. Fnatic's gonna lock first, it's all great. Fnatic did lock first, which is not the way we expected. Uh, and it actually means now for a game like this, H2K, they have a chance to show that they are the only top team who's consistently actually taking care of the bottom teams. And that word consistent is not one we have used about H2K a lot this split. Time and time again, we say they're an inconsistent team. They have great highs, but then they have bad lows as well. Across the last few years, they've been incredibly consistent in getting to playoffs. They have three third places, one fourth place, and one fifth sixth across the course of their EU LCS career. Probably one of the most consistent teams when it means getting to playoffs. When it, yeah, exactly. When it means getting to playoffs, yet they never make it all the way to the final. And a lot of people talk about choking uh, for H2K. And I think it's a little bit overused. Uh, I personally used it myself as well in the past, but it just kind of becomes a little bit lazy uh, point. Well. When you say, oh yeah, H2K choking playoffs, you know, blah, blah, we don't want to talk about them. But like last split, they didn't choke. They just got so outplayed by Fnatic, who actually came in with a playstyle that literally just countered everything H2K were trying to bring to the table. Because if you guys remember, it's all about camping bot lane. That was where H2K had issues with communication, the Koreans, obviously, and the rest of the team. And that just got abused so hard by Fnatic that it wasn't choked. They just got outplayed. And this split, I feel like they actually look better than normally. Uh, the last few weeks, they have, as you said, consistently looked super, super good. And that's the first time I really have this feeling about H2K showing up big time in playoffs. And someone is going to take this part clip it out, show it in a few weeks after they have failed miserably in playoffs. And I've already got someone you doing know, it. Yeah, I've yeah, got someone I know. clipping I know. their Twitch vote already. But it's important to note that they haven't secured first spot yet, Deficio. They do still have to win out today. If Unicorns lose later on against Vitality and H2K win this game, of course they secure first. But most likely, it's all going to come down to Sunday, where H2K and the Unicorns of Love match up against each other.
And that's going to be a sick one. Obviously, Group A is more or less decided at this point. Not the same for Group B. Let's see what Amazing wants to do. Took the Raptors, took the red buff. Trying to find Yang, because he will find him as well. Level then he runs away. He's got a level disadvantage. The Cocoon has to be flashed away by Amazing. And this is the early pressure we wanted to see from Yankos. You said his lanes can help him set up. He got level three first, and he forces Amazing back. Now he's already top lane with the Renekton lane. You always want to play around it early. Bot lane, a bit of fighting, but Nuclear understands how to get out of this combo here from Dreams. Yankos still sitting top lane, already level three and he will soon try and kill Kikis. And this actually just sucks for Kikis, because normally it's amazing going top lane gank for him. Now it's Yankos. He's getting betrayed. Look at that minion wave stacked up as well. Yankos actually walks in, walks out. Amazing will realize that Yankos is doing those crugs. And the question is now, how well these top lane jungle duos can react to the play? I think uh, Yankos here... Oh, actually, he's bot lane. Ah, no, mind, no, mind. Just a little bit of trading, but... I think Yankos probably realized the full HP Gragas was a little bit difficult to kill, with Amazing potentially still being topside. Uh, so he played it safe. Amazing, no flash! Thumbed up straight away. Here comes Kickers across the wall. Yankos down to 200 HP. Amazing low as well. Yankos has to jump away. They're gonna get the knock-up onto Odo one there. Yankos flashes in. First Blood King! Once again for H2K, and they get away. H2K plays superbly well in the early game. Amazing lost his flash earlier when he found Yankos Yankos in the river, and then he still goes for that play up in the top lane. Kikis could have just sat back, trying to pick up all the farm he needed. Yankos already stepped away from the potential tower dive, but then with the re-engage from Amazing, it was clear H2K could just focus him. No way out once you engage here as a Rek'Sai with no flash. And that is a very early first spot for the Elise, and exactly what you want if you're H2K. Great hook onto Yuki as well as Che pulls him back. Nuclear puts down an explosive shot. He gets a bit of extra damage down onto the Zaya. It's been such a good early game already for H2K. Yankos is ahead. Where does he go from here to really snowball this for H2K? Do you continually look top, even though Kickers has saved his flash? I mean, top is always the easy one to go for because your Renekton will always be stronger in 1v1. Meaning, if the jungler then shows up with you, well, actually, let's see if we're on, kill him. Flash away from Kikis. Odo Amne just harassing in that lane. Yes, yeah, so this was the 1v1. Let's pretend both junglers join. Well, fun enough, the Renekton is still stronger than the Gragas, so the 2v2 is also in favor of H2K, meaning they're not afraid of a counter gank from Amazing. So Yankos can just keep playing topside if he wants to and really try and shut down Kikis, who, by the way, just lost his flash. And has burned his teleport to get back into the lane. It's a compelling point about Yankos in this early game because up until now, he's been performing a lot better on tanks than he has on these early game junglers. Yeah, and I actually think the whole uh, tank jungle meta really benefited H2K in terms of the consistency. Because on Elise and Lee Sin, Yankos would gamble in the early game and sometimes it would backfire and he would fall behind, he would make a risky play, no one could follow him in an invade or tower dive. And H2K suddenly didn't look great in the early game because of some of those moves. Right now, when Yankos has been playing tanks, he didn't need to risk anything. You had scaling, you could just wait for team fights. It was fine. It actually made H2K a more consistent team. Doesn't mean he can't play the early game junglers. We just don't always see them. And as you saw there, a lot of success so far, especially on Zac with the, what was it, 62 KDA? 62 KDA. It's the yeah, highest classic. KDA of any player in the league at the moment. And it's pretty close to my Twitch KDA from solo queue as well. I've played with your Twitch. I'm pretty sure you die a lot more times in lane than that. Yeah, but I get so many kills that the KDA uh, okay. just keeps going up and up and up. At the end, Odo is going to take a trade in the top lane. Kick is no flash. Can he belly bop his way away? I don't think so. He jumps back into Odo Think Wombat. again, Medic! Yeah, this is, this is the reason I'm on no CS top laner, but Yankos is an LCS jungle and he's looking for another kill. The wave will push in. He puts out a volatile spiraling to keep Kickers in the lane. The stun, the cocoon, the CC chain from H2K. And you know, life sucks when it actually would have been better to just dive 1v1 instead of giving over an assist and a kill now. So the fact that Kickers ends up staying alive just meant Yankos could pick up an easy one. Mid lane, though. Looking for the kill on for Bibbin. He'll use Ghost and Flash. He dodges away from the Shockwave. Three members of Mysterious Monkeys were mid. They realize they are losing control of this map. Yeah, and think of uh, Mysterious Monkeys early game like, like a shotgun. They have a few big shots they can go for to try and get back in the game. This was one of them, you know, roam into mid lane, try and kill Febivin. But on the side of H2K, they can just keep spraying again and again and again. Yankos can keep ganking. Mid lane, bot lane, top lane. Their CC set up for him. He's uh, escaping for now. Amazing use of Flash. Shay's gonna land the hook as well, and of course there's no Shockwave available for the Mysterious Monkeys. A great cocoon onto Coscu will get cleansed. 
and H2K won't get the engage they want. I respect the amazing here for actually trying to make one of those big moves, you know, really see, okay, kill the jungler, get something more, get back in this game here, your Mysterious Monkey's already down over a thousand gold. Sadly for them, those big shots, they're missing right now. H2K, they're surviving them. Yankos didn't even have to use any summoners right there, because, well, even if he wanted to, he couldn't, because there's no flash, but, like, he could escape without anything uh, being used, and suddenly, Flash is down from Amazing. He's no longer scary in terms of setup. They only have to respect the fact he's high level, but obviously Yankos has a full jungle he can clear now and try and catch back up. And H2K here have shown us how strong their early game can be. Che, once again, landing a hook in this bottom lane. This is a message from H2K to FNAF, to G2, to the Unicorns of Love, saying, look, guys, we're not gonna, we're not gonna choke this time. We're not gonna do what Fnatic and G2 did on day one. We're not gonna lose to these lower level teams. We will control the map. We will play a very distinctive and strong style, and we will shut our enemies out of the game. Well, let's see if that holds true today. So far, it's a great start for it's, them. It, well, you predicted it. I, that's true, I that's true, it. that's so true. The, uh, the caster curse cancels itself out, doesn't it? If two casters predict I the hope same so. thing. And the good thing was, Vedius did not make any predictions, which yeah, could so have obviously fine. jinxed the whole thing. Especially uh, with that tie as well. Oh, what was he thinking? The tie yesterday. I don't understand how that tie ever made it on broadcast, but it did. And uh, we all move on. We try to forget it for now. Yeah, we do. Dreams, trying to forget the nightmare that this bottom lane has been at times. But even in CS, and actually perhaps the single ray of hope for the Mysterious Monkeys as top lane has been the focus for Yankos. As we talked about with the Renekton always being stronger than the Gragas, so it is an easy one for him, but obviously killing the Gragas over and over is not enough. You actually need to get the tower. Uh, because once you get the tower, you open up for Ramna to leave. He can go mid lane and put pressure. So when you get mid tower, he can go top uh, bot lane. He can make a play there. Like That's always the key thing, and one of the things H2K always managed to work a lot on with Ramna is whenever he has a, a winning lane matchup, it's not enough just to win lane. It's also what you do the next 10 minutes. How do you snowball your advantage into multiple other lanes? And that's something I think Odomna does really well. It's something we should be able to track in this game once he gets the, the tower, because Kikis can't defend. Like, he's just gonna stack armor, sit there, be slapped around a little bit, and then he's gonna walk away and lose that tower. That he is. He's already about 30 CS down in that top lane as well. Mysterious Monkeys are trying to get vision control down towards this bottom side of the map. There is a Mountain Drake as well for them to Fisher if they want to go for it. Kikis has just burnt his TP up towards the top side though, so Oduwame has the ability to react. All right, so Kikis trying to stay, or at least catch up a little bit in his lane. That's why he's sacrificing that teleport. But again, as you said there, it actually means that while the monkeys, you know, want to try and make something happen on the other side, they can't now. And that's actually always a very interesting debate. Uh, when do you just completely sack one lane and try and play on the other side? If Kegis had saved his teleport here and they said, you know what, screw it, I'm done anyway, I need this TP so we can actually play on bottom side, well, then they could have done that. But Kegis TPing back to his lane, he's trying to save himself and not fall too far behind, but it does mean the rest of the monkeys don't have an advantage anywhere to play around. So you might try to neutralize one lane, but still be a bit behind and then not really get an advantage. So it's always a fun debate. Should you sack one lane completely, play the other one? Play around mid lane. But well, here comes Dreams as well with the charm. They're gonna jump straight back onto Koscu though, and the teleport's coming in. Yankos on a killing spree, three for him. And here comes Odo Omne. He's gonna jump onto Dreams. It's another for H2K. Jay off to the side, locks up Amazing. Kikis is getting tower dive. A great hook onto Amazing as well. We'll pull him back. Oh. He won't even get the kill underneath the tower. Nuclear takes him down. H2K gets three kills and walk away. I so beautiful. Like like they read Mysterious Monkeys here, they know exactly what's gonna happen. So as soon as Feverman is getting attacked, well, everyone reacts. TP comes in instantly. They're going for more. Flash in from Odo. He will get bobbed back. He needs to be a little bit careful as he's taking tower shots. Yuki's trying to trade a kill, but the exhaust keeps Odo alive. Okay. And amazing dice. It's smelling like a perfect game all of a sudden when you start seeing these tower dives early on actually work for the aggressive team. H2K do stay alive. No towers going down just yet in this game, but still a massive gold advantage at 11 minutes. We said in champ select, this come from H2K, super, super strong in the early game. And we looked at Jankos, we looked him in the eyes, and we said, you know, it's, it's you right now. You need to do so well, you need to perform. And every single move from Jankos so far, been a success. That it has. You can see what Mysterious Monkeys want to do. You say they have this shotgun, they tried to make the engages happen, but it just didn't quite work. No, because H2K, with the map control, they're just around. They can always react fast and get to the mid lane before Mysterious Monkeys. Yuki had to run the long route around 
Well, Nuclear just walks straight up River and he's like, hey guys, I'm here. I'm gonna fight him. It's so hard when you're this far down in terms of map map pressure already because you're just always gonna be outnumbered. Uh, good at flashy from Yoki, but then Kigis uh, will have to sacrifice his life. And Che makes two superb plays. The exhaust right at the end to stop the kill onto Oduamne and the hook on to Amazing. In picks and bans, we were saying he's probably one of our best supports of the split. We'll talk about that a little bit more as Kigis is just gonna get dived once again. It's, it's more of a eulogy than anything else whenever <laughs> yeah. we talk about Kickers now. Oh, and this is not the game you want to have if you're the Mysterious Monkeys. It's not even about losing to H2K, it's about how you're losing. Like, you're getting completely dumpstered, especially in the top lane. But hard as a Gragas against Renekton Elise. This is the man you just talked about before, Medic. Che down the bottom lane, I think he is currently looking like one of the best supports in Europe. Definitely one of the most consistent supports. And I think it's hard to decide between him and like Jesses and, and maybe a Mithy in there, but I think looking at the entire regular season, Chase definitely standing out as one of the absolute best. His numbers definitely put him at the top and some of the plays he has enacted, even in just this game, have been absolutely exemplary. And coming back to the mysterious monkeys as well here, Deficio, you look at NIP, well, first tower blood goes down to H2K, thank you. Good job, and that's what you said you wanted to see H2K do. But Mysterious Monkeys, you look at NIP yesterday, had such a great performance against Fnatic. Giants and Schalke are coming off wins in their playoff tournament as well. Mysterious Monkeys will not want to finish with a loss, but it's looking pretty devastating for them at the moment. Uh, definitely a tough first game for this team here. Uh, I actually think, like, let's see what happens here, because Che is invading, but no one is reacting. But generally, like, the Monkeys, unlike some of the other bottom teams, kind of stopped progressing, uh, progressing a lot. I, I think, like, we've seen improvement from NIP now. We've seen Vitality actually slowly get better and better during the split as well, but the Mysterious Monkeys, it's... It was a rough week one to three. Roster changes happened. Honeymoon phase, week four to six, and things were looking much better. They were actually succeeding in the early game, getting kickers ahead on different split pushers. Yuki played really well in team fights, and they could actually start doing something. And then the last few weeks, once again, they've just been falling behind so consistently, and that's why they can't get any objectives, because if you're behind, how are you ever going to get a Baron or a Dragon? And the numbers just dip so far down. And they're going to play up against teams that are known for having better early games. Giants in Challenger Series have a strong early game. They play into the late. Schalke have a strong early game a lot of the time as well. And NIP, the only thing we've praised about them is the early consistently game. is their early game. But H2K in this early game at the 15 minute mark have a 5,000 gold lead. And they are looking for more. Already cleared two of those outer towers. Just need that one in the bottom lane to complete the set. Yeah, the one lane doing okay so far is the bottom lane for Mysterious Monkeys. We've seen that a lot this split. I feel like Dreams and Yuki have actually been holding their own for most of the games. It's the same here, but the problem is when the other lanes are losing, well, <laughs> you're no longer playing 2v2. There's, there's a mid lane hour and jungle, and suddenly you just end up getting ganked and you have to give up your tower. They will have to concede that, and because Oduwamne got that first tower in the top lane because so much pressure was put up there, it's allowed him to roam into mid, which yep. has allowed H2K to bring more men down towards bottom lane. And it's just a nice, you know, coordinated setup. Febivan calls, I can go bot lane. Well, then Oduwamne calls, cool, good, I will push out. I don't know why he said could, but he just said well, something else. Okay. He said, yeah, 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 no, I'm pushing top, this guy is whatever, inting, and then he goes mid, and then boom, suddenly you actually have Pressure in every lane, even without him being top lane anymore, because the wave is already pushed down. But what I'm gonna now will have to try and defend, and that was pretty easy. So he just killed the wave. <laughs> There's a lot of wave clear already on that Renekton. Has level 11, that level 2 ultimate available for him as well. Question Do you need to also get Rift Hilt or avoid the enemy team getting Rift Hilt for the perfect game? See, I say no. Because it didn't used to be part yeah. of it. I, I say no, because I don't count dragons either. It's towers and kills. Ooh. I thought people counted dragons. Maybe they do. Maybe they do. We'll, because, take, we'll uh, take a little consensus afterwards, because they are going to lose the Rift Tower to Amazing. Yeah. So unless Oda One May comes down. So that is the question. Is it still a perfect game, even though you lose Rift Tower? Uh, I don't know. People can decide on Twitter. Can we say yes? Because then I think you have this really good comparison, because Unicorns of Love at the start of last week, actually, Trump's going to land here. There's the shot wave as well, where it doesn't even matter, because they're going to get yeah, killed. There we go. You, you screwed it, Deficio. I did. It's because I didn't say they were going to get a perfect game yeah, as well. We, we worked out the cast of Curse still. The Mysterious saved. Monkeys get in and they get a little bit of gold back for themselves with a kill onto Forbidden. I mean, if they can use the Rift Hell as well to maybe get a tower, you, you get it, yeah, something back at least in this game. The problem is you've lost four turrets already. Uh, the enemy team is currently sitting and about to complete the second items and you are still 
to sitting with your first item completed. So it is extremely tough for the monkeys. Uh, amazing. Actually been able to do a great job in terms of just farming and keeping ahead in experience, but that's because Yank has been busy getting his laners ahead. Exactly, and he because he's been farming his jungle, the map now opens up with those towers falling, and there'll be less and less of that jungle for him to take because H2K will then step forward. And we said it in Picks and Bands, if H2K can get ahead early, they can force fights around objectives. We've got two and a half minutes for the Baron. We've got a Mountain Drake coming up relatively soon as well. That's where H2K will want to fight and try and force Mysterious Monkeys to try and react. All right, we might see here top lane, 2v2 being set up. So every lane is... is currently matching, just swap the map around, and that means once again it's about the junglers and what they can do to actually assist these lanes. Uh, currently, Yankos sitting with some early magic penetration, meaning he can almost one-shot uh, some of these members on Mysterious Monkeys. Koskyu will find him and contest the vision, and you can suddenly see Che on his way. Che with the hook, Koskyu cleanses it away, has the Banshees and the Cleanse for extra protection in that mid lane, but as we say, he's already almost an item behind for Biven, who's picked up a Haunting guys alongside those Sorcerer Shoes with the Morello Nomica. Always a great feeling, you're zero one one yourself, you feel like you've been doing okay, you click tap, you see the enemy mid laner with way more items than you, he's been getting some kills as well, and you just realize you can't actually do anything, you can't hold your mid lane anymore, and the fact that Cross Q could actually contest this ward, that was a big thing in itself. Che right there could have killed him. If Che just flashed right after the cleanse happened uh, and just flayed Kasu, he would die. But he didn't have vision, so he go for it. But let's see here. Jinkus is going to jump in onto Yankos. He jumps up, looking for the lantern. Can't quite get there. It's a shutdown on the Elise. And now for Biven and Oda Wame join the fight. Amazing gets the shockwave. The blast cone brings Oda Wame in. A kill onto Amazing. Kick is still in the front line as Nuclear tries to open up the guns. Can't quite connect onto the mysterious monkeys. They will steal away a blue. Uh, a red and get a one for one. Yeah, get the shutdown on Yankos as well here. So once again, the monkey is getting some gold back. Che, he wants more. Flash, Flay, he's just too tanky. Misses every skill shot, but it does not matter as Oda Wame will go on a killing spree on this Renekton. It was a zoning Flay right there. <laughs> Made sure he stepped towards H2K, and this mid lane tower looks nice and easy to take down. Nuclear with the Tristana on his way. And while it was a one for one first, the problem for Mysterious Monkeys is they will never just get these easy, even trades. So we'll always end up losing something after. This was another kill and a tower going down. And H2K currently sitting with that 8,000 gold lead at 19 minutes. Not too shabby. Yeah, you'll be pretty happy with that. Especially since we said we wanted H2K to perform consistently. Yeah. Like the team they have been over the last few weeks. And it's why it's so fun to watch H2K play at the moment, because the coordination is just much better than what we're used to seeing from them. Yang is right here, uh, ends up face-checking without vision, did actually place his ward, so we can't flame him for not thinking about the vision. He just didn't have it in the first place, and yeah, he might die, but now with Odama instantly TPing in, the rest of the Mysterious Monkeys, very split up. You can one side, Koshku on the other, so it's hard to use your front line to allow the back line to deal damage. They all have to kind of kite on their own. And then we see Che right here with the Yellow Star cosplay. Wait for it. Oh, there it is. He doesn't even use the hook at the end because he's just like, I can't miss all of my skill shots. No way there. No way. Just the one. Rift Hold was used in the top lane, but it will not secure a tower for the Mysterious Monkey. So it may not be a perfect game, but it may be a perfect structure game for H2. Well, I guess we're just finding new ones now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. And now I've like cast it as I well. Like as I think Che might have a perfect game as a support as well, where yeah. he doesn't get a kill and no deaths either. It's important with the support perfect games, you're not allowed to kill steal anything if you want to be the perfect support. That's only because you play AD carry and you just want to get all the kills for yourself. Yeah, but I used to play the kill stealing support to get a better KDA, and I never, I, I was never proud. I was always like, you know what? This feels wrong. It's a dirty win when yeah, you steal it all the kills as it a support. Is. Well, Che's done a pretty good job of maintaining that KDA, as we showed earlier. 5.6 first amongst supports across the And that's the important one, the support KDAs, yeah. you know, those are already important The problem ones. is we don't have any good metrics to track support to Fischio. You need to find one. As a, as a previous professional support player, you need to work out what supports are meant to do and how we can track if they do that well. I do like kill participation on supports. I actually like early game uh, participation quite a lot. Like, how successful are you at maybe leaving your lane, going to the mid lane, trying to set something up? How successful are you at teaming up with your jungler to, to force a play? Uh, that's always something fun to look at, but yeah, it can be difficult, uh, especially because kill participation is such a weird stat. It's like, hey, you have a low kill participation. Congratulations, your team is getting solo kills in lanes. Exactly. So do you suck then or no, not really. It's just your team doing really well. So always a weird stat. Well, let's just take a quick 
re-evaluation of the game. There's an 8,000 gold lead for H2K. They now have double mountains, and they're starting to pick up this second item spike we talked about. Odo Amne has gone for the Blade of the Ruined King second on the Renekton. Mm -hmm. and alongside that Black Cleaver, and also has a BF Sword just for a bit of extra AD. Yeah, gonna get the GA coming in because, of course, there's not really a lot of tankiness on his side with the Blade build, but it is the superior split pushing choice. And when you are 3 0 4 22 minutes, you can go for the pure DPS split push style because no one can stop you, and amazing escapes. Notice how I waited right there. That's a caster tip. So you set it up as, oh, I'm going to say he's going to die, but then you wait and you see the escapes and you just change. That's where I've been going wrong the whole time. You just got to pause. I'm trying to be Nostradamus. I'm trying to predict what's happening instead of pausing, yeah. totally interrupting my own flow. Or, and then yeah, trying to do it you can again. also drag out the name. Amazing Ding. escapes. There yeah, you go. So that would work. And then you well, never make the wrong call. An amazing band by H2K as Yankos. Secured it. There we go. See, there we go. Thank you, thank you. Very easy. We never want to say anything wrong. Casting lessons with Deficio. Drag out the words. Let's see. Kikis wants to look for the <laughs> disengage. <laughs> this is disgraceful. He Deficio. walked away. He People walked are going to watch this VOD <laughs> and they're going to think you're giving them actual <laughs> tips. You realize this? It's like when you tell a little child something that's blatantly <laughs> wrong. It's like, Oh no, of, of course you're not hey, hey, fighting. Dreams goes in for the engage. He almost goes down. Oda Wamne will join the fight. And now they're looking for the backlight. Che gets Dreams. Yuki stunned up as well. Oda Wamne on a rampage as H2K close in for the win. They've got the Baron. They have 11 kills to two, and perhaps they'll take the game off this push. Yeah, I really feel like H2K, they're winning this game at the moment. I know it's a bold prediction, but it looks like H2K can take the first one here. Oda Wamne, he wants more. He's hiding around the corner with Che. This is for MVP. Yeah, put more water in He there. knows we look at KDA and he's like, I can build that's, up my KDA for the MVP. Give me more kills. Oh, the hook's gonna land from Che. Koskyu cleanses it away. But Lantern out for Odo Omne keeps him safe for the time being. Mysterious Monkeys, the unleashed power is not quite enough on two kickers. But H2K are now pushing into the base. Gonna continue with the engage. That's an unstoppable Odo Omne as he kills Dreams once again. And it's all but done and dusted for H2K. They take an inhibitor in the top. Nuclear gets another kill for himself. And H2K should be able to close out the game. Got some minions coming. No super minions just yet for them, but I don't think they need them with the Baron buff here. Let's see on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. Kigas and Yuki trying to defend. Amazing is actually recalling behind. Uh, he's here now. And we'll get back, but H2K have just looked absolutely unstoppable this game. Oduwame and Yankos teamed up so well in the early game. And H2K, show us what you do if you are the first team in your group. You take down the underdogs and you go 1-0 up in the series. Just to remind everyone, if H2K takes down the Mysterious Monkeys, then Unicorns of Love have to beat Vitality later today in order for them to still try and get that first place. But now HK are making sure they are doing their job. I don't think they could have done it any faster. 25 minutes, complete stomp. And some of the issues, you know, when you end up drafting a lot of late game is once again, if you can't get to the late game, it doesn't really matter. I think Yankos had quite a nice game in the least, but also a game where it was fairly easy for him to go to whatever lane he wanted to. But you have to give H2K as a team credit for that because they drafted a composition that could get these early engages off in the lanes. They took a lot of lanes that if they had fallen behind, perhaps would have struggled a little bit more. Although with the Tristana, you could say they've got a bit of scaling going into the late game. Of course, yeah, well. yeah. I mean, it's never like that terrible yeah. in the late game, uh, but I think when you look at a performance like this, again, you, you look at Yankos, you remember, hey, this guy can obviously play the early game style. He also showed the late game with the tank. So it's great to see how flexible he's become. The only question is if he can actually do it on a cold, rainy day in Stoke as well. And if he's not able to do it, well, then we'll probably see him choking playoffs. But who knows? That's a good thing. Playoffs aren't in Stoke. They're still in are Berlin sure? and then in Paris as well. Maybe they are. Maybe I've just been flying across to Berlin each week for no reason. And you just fly in a little circle on the yeah, back just Stoke. around Stoke yeah, for the go. entire time. H2K took the Nexus in game one, and they take the win. To break it down, I'm going to hand it over to our very own Star Guardians. Star Guardian Shock, Star Guardian Bedius. Take it away. Wait, you can't see the bottom of the heart. Star move Guardian it up. Love. Move it up, move it up. Up it goes. Yeah, whatever. That was a really <laughs> uh, crappy heart. But thank you very much, <laughs> Medic. Uh, we didn't really know any poses, so we thought we'd give the viewers some love. And H2K definitely gave the game some love. Uh, fantastically clean from them. We do want to take a look at some of the specific instances in the draft 
particularly before we take a look at this replay, or actually we're going to take a look at it right <laughs> now, uh, the pressure that they decided to exert from the draft out with the Elise and the Renekton pick. Yeah, I really wanted to highlight as well how well H2K play this two versus two, because initially their goal is to disengage. The moment they realize Amazing is hard committed, Yankos is in a really tough spot, but notice he creates a gap, allows the focus to go back onto Odo, then realizing that Amazing's focus is no longer onto Yankos, he comes in from the flank and adds that additional bit of damage to allow the turnaround, and then they split up, they just separate themselves. But the pressure doesn't end there, because when you have Elise and Renekton, it's all about trying to get this Renekton ahead, when you have Elise, who's such an amazing tower diver, and I love the fact that they utilize this, this 2v2, that they've demonstrated in the past early on in the split that they could uh, execute so perfectly. Yeah, your point uh, when we were talking about the game during the game was that this is something that we've seen from H2K in the beginning of the split, but due to the tank meta, it's not picks that we've seen so many times because it's a slower early game. You're working more towards those team fights and the later game. So it's very interesting that H2K try and replicate the style again, even in the tank meta. Yeah, because the thing about the tank meta is, as you rightly said, you move away from this early game. You don't want to try and snowball your laners. You want your laners to go even where you transition into the mid and late game. And that's definitely benefited H2K in the last few weeks because it stopped Yanko's playing that hyper-aggressive, sort of risky gamble style. But he was able to get himself the Elise this game. They let it through. They didn't think they would put that much priority on it. But he does, and he has another fantastic game. There were a few instances where he face checks, he takes a couple of risky decisions himself, and he does get caught. But this time around, his team was there and ready to support him to make up for, uh, if anything, he was the initiator in a few of those exchanges. However, it's still risky to go for that Elise and Renekton if you don't get it rolling. And even with a couple of kills, what are the possible risks involved with the fact that you're still going up against the tank composition, uh, which you maybe lack a bit of engage later on in the game. So it becomes a very similar situation to what we saw with Fnatic yesterday, where even if you have a great start, if you don't have a reliable way to start the fights, it can become very difficult when you're going up against some of these tanks that are still relevant in the meta because they have good disengage tools, they soak up a lot of the initial damage, and basically it just gets harder and harder as the game progresses. So if you're going to run this kind of draft, you need to know how to to clean it out with the lead that you have. And fed, in fairness to H2K, that's something that they have time and time again demonstrated they know how to do, and they did once again this I game. was just going to say, in this game particularly, they also had a 3,000 gold advantage at 10 minutes. They had a couple of early tower dives that worked out absolutely perfect for them. So there weren't really any notable hurdles for them to execute their composition. On the other side of Mysterious Monkeys, um, yeah, tough loss, obviously, because you do want to show something, but it didn't really seem like they could stop the snowball in any shape or form. No, uh, the, the reality was they were in this situation where they're going up against the least Renekton and you just have to play around it as best as you can. Something that we did see from NIP yesterday was that they were giving up lane advantages but out of respect towards the Elise. And even by playing that, it does not stop dives from happening. So it's very much on the jungler to try and counter gank as often as possible. And while Amazing was there a few times, we even saw how that didn't really work out in Mysterious Monkey's favor. So it feels like H2K, they do not want another day of upsets like we saw yesterday. No, they don't. They came to the office and they just want to deliver a good job and clean this out very cleanly two to zero. We'll see if the Mysterious Monkeys have anything to say about that. We're going to take a short break. But do like cast it in and Rift walk back to lane in time for game two. Stick around. Today, H2K and